Today's World Traveler continues with a look at Rome, and then we're going to travel north to Florence. Well, begin your morning walk at the Campa dei Fiori, a colorful outdoor fruit and vegetable market that's been in business for 300 years and has always been one of the main piazzas of the city. Its food stands are really popular with local residents, and you'll even find some clothing stalls and souvenirs scattered among the local wares. And they have some funky little vehicles, little trucks that bring these goods in. And there are some coffee shops that open up at 6 a.m. right here within a block or a half a block of the Campo dei Fiori. So if your hotel doesn't serve breakfast until 7, which is typical of most of the hotels in the city, and you're looking for some place that's got some interest, some activities going on to take a look at so early in the morning and looking for some coffee, come on over to the Campo dei Fiori and there you'll find it. We're walking back to our hotel just around the corner for breakfast and then we're going to head out to the Vatican Museum first thing in the morning. Sometimes it helps to Take a taxi if you want to get across town in a hurry. We find it's best to get to the Vatican early before the crowds develop later in the day so we don't have to wait online. Notice the line is relatively short. Only takes about 10 minutes to get in if you get here at the opening bell. This wonderful spiral staircase used to be the main entrance but now nobody ever knows about it because it's tucked away on the side behind the post office. See if you can find it. The Vatican Museum, most famous for the Sistine Chapel, contains thousands of other great treasures from ancient Rome and from the Middle Ages, even right on up through the Renaissance. And it's connected with St. Peter's, of course, with the Basilica. This particular statue here is called the Apollo Belvedere. And it is just one of the finest pieces of art ever created. It's about 2,000 years old. It's actually a, a Roman version of a Greek original. Notice the floor mosaics are works of art also. And then in the middle we have this huge marble basin. This is about 2,000 years old and it's believed to have come from the palace of Nero. And we carry on through various galleries in the Vatican Museum. There's hundreds and thousands of statues. And then in the next room it's the map gallery. And then into the Sistine Chapel of course. The ceiling painted by Michelangelo, perhaps the greatest painting ever created. It contains the scenes from the Bible. There's Genesis, there's the creation, certainly the most famous of all the panels, the creation. And the way Michelangelo was able to uh, break up the ceiling into distinct clusters gives it a coherence and harmony that you wouldn't otherwise find. Originally, the plan was just to paint a few scenes and then have a lot of architecture painted up there. But as Michelangelo got more and more into it, he still had that artistic passion to do it right, to do what was com his inner voice was compelling him to do. And he kept working and working. He wouldn't let anybody come in to see it except the Pope could come in now and then and have a look at it. And then when it was finally revealed, the, the world was shocked. The Italian world was just overwhelmed and astonished at the beauty of this work. When finished with the Sistine Chapel, you want to exit out the back door in the far corner of the chapel, leads you down the steps and brings you right to the Vatican gift shop, which has an outstanding selection of religious paraphernalia. You can get rosary beads with the pressed rose petal that smell wonderful, books, postcards, works of art. Well, St. Peter's Basilica is the most spectacular room ever built. No place else can even come in close second to this. And the ritual is that you rub the bronze foot of St. Peter for good luck. That's why it's all worn out. And then we have Baldacchino in bronze by Bernini and looking up to Michelangelo's dome, his towering accomplishment completed after his death. Bernini's bronze Baldacchino reaches 75 feet high there's Michelangelo's dome and his statue of the Pietà. There are mosaics, monuments, tombs, marble details, and angels everywhere. It's an unbelievable structure, and it's really difficult to photograph it because it's such a large, grand space. You really have to be there to appreciate it.